Hey guys, just running a little late tonight, but we're going to do a video to let you know what's going on. Uh, today, I was trying to do some business transactions, actually pay my bills, and my bank, uh, apparently, the app on my bank, was down, and I couldn't do any transactions in the morning. And uh, usually, the insurance takes money out of the first of the month, and um, you know, a, a rent, of course, has to be paid by the fifth. And uh, so I made a few transfers to Janine, try and see if we could get her bank to you know work. And uh, I thought to myself, the minute my bank was down, I looked up you know down.com or whatever it's called, downtime.com, and it said that my bank had been there was a I guess a hub between my bank and Seattle, where Seattle, Atlanta, several cities had uh, bank problems. And all I could think about was Cyber Polygon and how Klaus Schwab had said, you know, we're going after the banks. And I thought, ooh, you know, this is a little too close for comfort. And it was it was kind of weird because, um, like I say, there, you know, everything surrounds irony and synchronicity in my life. And as I was saying offhandedly about two or three nights ago, I was watching the TV show 911. I think it was on Monday night, Tuesday night. And it talks about malware and it talks about ransomware and it talks about how the banks shut down and talked about, um, you know, how the airport air traffic controllers were having problems and the fire departments were having problems. And I'm thinking, man, this is all like predictive programming. All they need is an off switch. All they need to do is to shut down. If you remember what Klaus Schwab said, he said there would be a cyber utility that they would propose if there was ever a massive shutdown of the banks. And the cyber utility would provide for everybody what would be a digidollar or some sort of a uh, coin or token. Um, FedCoin was talked about here in the United States. They halted FedCoin because it was supposed to come out in July of last year or July of this year. And they halted it because they wanted to review it because of this whole trillions of dollars going into this reparations thing. So they're banking on you not knowing about what's coming with regard to uh, tokens and what are known as, uh, they're calling it FedCoin, Digidollar, they're calling it Britcoin in England. Uh, the, the yuan in China is already digital. Venezuela has accepted Bitcoin as currency. So we're, we're moving ever so slowly into once again, a year zero type affair where they're going to have a cashless society and it's getting closer and closer. And, and so I'm going to talk about that tonight. It's called breaking the bank. And, um, it, uh, you know, a lot of things, censorship going on, all things, uh, pertaining to the internet. They want to shut down the internet and then they want to reboot it again. They want to reboot it again to where they're going to restrict certain people who they think are combative. They're going to restrict a lot of things. And that's why we've said, and I saw the writing on the wall, and that's why I created Aftermath. Aftermath, meaning aftermath of what happens um, with the government and with the internet. So Aftermath.fm is where you go to listen to the show from 7 to 10. Monday through Friday, it's free if you listen from 7 to 10. Now we have Aftermath.media. Now the reason why we have Aftermath.media is that it's a protection for us and for you and it protects the shows, it has them available. Um, and we have other shows and other groups that provide entertainment as well. Plus we have videos that are in our video library. We have books in our book library. We have documents in the document library. Anything you wanna do for research is in that. Everything we talk about, lockstep, the Rockefeller uh, moves, the patents for COVID, all those things are in the library. When you hear people praise Aftermath.media like Pastor Mark did last night, it's because it is a treasure trove of valuable information that we've gathered together. It's kind of like our, our attempt at uh, putting together a seed vault. And it's up there in the Arctic Circle somewhere. We, we did. I mean, our, our servers are in the Arctic Circle, far away, hopefully, from anybody's hands. Um, and, you know, we, we certainly appreciate um, all of the support you've given us, but we, we really, really want all listeners, as many listeners as we can get to at least, you know, sign up for the $10, um, $10, uh, uh, subscription. $10 a month. $10 a month. And you get access to everything. Um, we wanted to also have, if you buy in bulk, a cheaper alternative. 
which means if you pay for a year, it's only $79. Um, and that is a great price. It's about $7 a month. Is that $7 a month? That's yeah. $7 a month for full access at 79 a year. And then friends and family is $139, and that's you and three other people. So, because people have said, well, how do I get my friends to listen? And say, well, you know, you guys can all go in on it together. Heck, I even tell people to go in on it, you know, if they're with the $10, because I think that they can also secretly have another, don't they have another, uh, maybe I'm wrong, that they can have a friend. I think two, maybe. Huh? There two other two devices. Other, two or other two other devices. other devices. Yeah, so two other devices. Uh, sometimes you can use two devices in order, you know, your phone, you can use your, yeah. your, your internet. So if somebody at home wants to listen, they can listen on the computer, they can listen on the phone. It's just to keep everything together. And it's and we put more money into it when people pay. We update the apps all the time. You get emails to tell you when these apps are updated. I want to remind people of that because every time when we update the app, people go, I can't get my app to work. I pay this money and I can't get it to work. Look at your emails because tech support sends emails out saying we may be shut down for a day or two or whatever we need to do. They tell you. So get. I encourage people who are subscribers to look at their emails and to read their emails from Aftermath. They're very important when they send out. They're not something to be ignored. You need to read them because there could be something that could help you get a better performance out of your app. And uh, that way, because I don't know, you guys write me and say, what am I going to do? And I go, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. I just I just do a show. So I, I basically throw it to Ron Patton. <laughs> Ground zero Ron at gmail.com. If you have a problem, bother yeah. Ron. I love it. You love it? I like the abuse. Yeah, I think we all like <laughs> the abuse. Anyway, so we're looking at uh, what, 5, 10, 20. Yeah, we got to get about going. 10 minutes. Let's get out of so here, man. get out of here, get in the studio, pop open a Coca-Cola, and we're going to do a show. So we'll see you soon.